Hello, I'm State Representative Sandy Major. I'm glad I could join you today to discuss how laws are made in Pennsylvania. I was elected by the voters in our area to represent them in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives, which is the oldest elected legislative body in the United States. As one of the 203 members of our Pennsylvania House, I travel to our state capital, Harrisburg, to make laws that govern our state. It's my job as your representative to help write those laws and vote for those I feel are best for the residents of our district and Pennsylvania as a whole. In order to explain the process of lawmaking in Harrisburg, our House staff has prepared the following short video called Making Laws in Pennsylvania. I hope you enjoy the presentation. Welcome to Harrisburg, the state capital of Pennsylvania. I'm Flash the Firefly. Did you know that the Firefly is the official insect of Pennsylvania? That's your state capital down there. Your state legislators make laws in that building. They even decide how many days that you go to school. Come on. Whoa! Let me see now. Where should we start? Well, actually, this is as good a place as any. You see, laws start with people. People's ideas. When someone gets an idea for a law, they give it to their representative. Then, the lawmaker, that's another word for representative, decides if it's a good idea and if the law is really needed. If so, they take the idea here, to the Legislative Reference Bureau, where lawyers write the idea in the form of a bill. A bill is a legally drafted and printed copy of someone's idea for a new law. When they're properly drafted, the bills look like this. Representatives take these bills to other lawmakers to get their support for the idea. They often ask them to sign the bills, showing their support. When the bill is formally introduced, it's handed to the bill clerk on the floor of the House of Representatives and given a number. Speaker decides which committee gets the bill. More about committees in a minute. Anyway, once the bill is given a number and referred to a committee, it's printed and copied so that lawmakers, staff, and others can review it. Sometimes, groups come to the Capitol to tell the legislators that they are for or against certain bills. This process, whether done by groups or individuals, is called lobbying. Lobbyists give their views on bills and try to convince lawmakers to vote for or against the idea. Another important stage in the lawmaking process is when the bill is studied by a legislative committee. This is a group of lawmakers, usually about 24 of them, who discuss the bill and then decide whether it should go to the full house for discussion and vote. An example is the Transportation Committee, whose members will consider bills about roads, highways, railroads, and laws which affect the thousands of car and truck drivers in the state. The largest committee, the House Appropriations Committee, has 32 members. It helps decide how the state should spend its money. That's a very popular committee. Then there's the Education Committee, which looks at bills that affect schools and teachers, from kindergarten through college. With the help of staff and others, members of these committees study the bills and sometimes hold public hearings on them. Hearings are special meetings, which allow people who know a lot about an issue or who have very strong feelings about the bill to talk to the committee members to give them information and opinions about the bills. During committee meetings, representatives talk about the bills, and sometimes debate, or have a kind of friendly argument about the bill. And they can even make changes to the bill, changes called amendments. When bills are sent to the House, they are put on a special list called the House calendar, which looks like this. Bills must be listed on three different days before the members of the House vote on them. This gives everyone a chance to become familiar with the bill. When members of the House speak on the floor, they always address the Speaker of the House. That's why so many begin with the phrase, Mr. Speaker. It's now time for all 203 members of the House to argue or debate the merits, what they like or don't like about the bill. Any member of the House can suggest changes to the bill. As in the committee process, a majority, more than half of the members present, can vote to change the bill. Finally, when all representatives who want to talk 
speak on a bill or offer amendments to it, have it giving an opportunity, legislators vote on the bill. The speaker says... The members will proceed to vote. Have all the members voted. The clerk will record the vote. Representatives use an electronic voting system. They have a red and green button on each of their desks. They push the green button for a yes vote, red buttons for a no vote. Representatives must vote yes or no. There is nothing in between. After the representatives vote, the result can be seen on these electronic voting boards in the House chamber. If the bill passes the House, it goes to the Senate, which uses an almost identical process. It is referred to committee by the President Pro Tem of the Senate. The Lieutenant Governor usually presides over the Senate, like the Speaker over the House. While the House uses an electronic voting system, the Senate uses the old-fashioned way, by voice vote. Whenever the senators vote on a bill, an amendment, or any motion, each senator's name is called, and each must respond yes or no. Ward, aye. White, aye. If the bill is changed by the Senate after the House passes it, it must go back to the House to make sure the House agrees with the changes. If not, House and Senate members may have to meet and discuss their differences in what's called a conference committee. In any case, before any bill goes to the governor for his signature, both the House and the Senate must pass the same identical bill. When the bill finally makes it to the governor, he can sign it or veto it. If the governor signs the bill, it becomes part of Pennsylvania law. If the governor rejects or vetoes the bill, the House and Senate could still make it into law if they can get two-thirds of their members to overturn the governor's decision. In the House, that would be 136 votes. In the Senate, 34 votes are necessary to override the governor's veto. Every law, whether it increases the speed limit to 65 miles per hour, increases punishment for criminals, or decides how many days a year you have to go to school, must go through this same process. At times, this lawmaking business may seem a little complicated. This democratic process is awesome. We think it's the best type of government there is. Well, I sure had fun meeting you today. I hope you got interested in how our government runs. And I hope you understand the democratic process a little better now. If you have any questions, be sure to ask your teachers. They'll be glad to help. Remember, you'll be a voter someday. Who knows? You might decide to run for office and become a state representative. Maybe even Speaker of the House. For now, I'm Flash the Firefly saying, see ya. Thanks for your interest in the legislative process. I'm Representative Sandy Major. Of course, this video is a simplified version of what can be a long and complicated procedure. I hope this quick review of lawmaking in Pennsylvania will encourage you to become a participant in the political process and, when you're old enough, register to vote. If your group has any questions about the tape you've just seen, please write and let me know. The addresses of my two district offices will be on the screen in a moment. Thank you for watching.